What is up YouTube? Brandon here. Today we're going to be doing a quick review of my 2023 Triumph Speed Twin 1200. I've had this bike for around seven months now, bought it at the end of 2023. Um, I'd be really happy with it. So we're going to go through um, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and the mods I've done to try to alleviate uh, the things I didn't like about the bike. Um, so first let's go over why I bought this bike. So I had owned motorcycles for many years and then when I went to graduate school I sold them all because uh, I was moving across the country and uh, when I finished school and moved for my new job I immediately wanted a new one and I had planned to order a BMW S1000 RR because um, I had prior to this owned uh, a similar bike, had a uh, S1000 XR. Um, but when I went to the BMW dealership and asked about it they said it would take a six to seven month wait. Um, to get the spec I wanted. So that was basically a non-starter. So I started looking at other things and I've always liked the look of uh, Triumphs and kind of classic bikes. And uh, Triumph was having a zero down zero APR promotion at the time to liquidate the 2023. So that was a deal that I couldn't pass up. Um, I had also considered the MT-09 SP and the uh, Kawasaki Z900 RS um, SE, the like yellow ball edition. Um, but I ended up going with the Triumph just because of the great financing deal and the V-twin, or sorry, the para parallel flat twin, I don't know what it's technically called, but it's a flat twin um, engine, which I really like. Um, so yeah, let's go through the things I actually don't like first, and uh, then we'll go through the things I like and kind of the mods I've done. So the first thing I really disliked from the factory was the sock suspension. Um, the sock suspension is absolute garbage. Um, coming from bikes that had either custom suspension or adaptable electronic suspension, this left a lot to be desired. In fact, when I was leaving the dealership after buying the bike, on the first couple turns, I was like, man, this, <laughs> this suspension is garbage. Um, and then, you know, under heavy braking as well, I could just feel that the front end was not good. Um, this version supposedly came with upgraded Marzaki forks in the front, but they are the most basic uh, forks you could get. So. Um, yeah, that's something you're going to need to upgrade if you want the bike to, uh, to feel good, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I had compared this bike to the Thruxton R or RS, whatever the top spec is, um, but I like the riding position on this one better, so I figured um, the main differences between this and the Thruxton RS are the um, riding position and the suspension. So I figured I could buy this and upgrade, which I've done. So yeah, stock suspension isn't good. Um, Additionally, the other main issue uh, in its stock form is that this bike uh, runs very lean from the factory. The fueling isn't good because of emissions requirements, so I get that, like they have to comply with it. But what that means, means a couple of things for the bike. Um, in its stock form, it runs very hot. Um, the fan is gonna be on constantly, um, and that got even you know, more exacerbated when I threw the aftermarket exhaust on. So just know that um, if you want this bike to run well, uh, you should probably get a tune done even on the stock exhaust because it runs really, really hot. Um, another byproduct of that is that in its stock form, the um, the throttle isn't good. It is a little bit snatchy, um, especially at low RPM just because of the, the bad fueling uh, for the emissions requirements. So um, again, something that can be easily resolved with a tune, but just something to know that low speed throttle response isn't uh, linear, isn't very great. Um, so those were the kind of the two main complaints I had about the bike uh, when I first got it. Um, other things I've kind of learned over time owning the bike that I don't like um, is the fuel capacity is very limited because you know they've tried to maintain this very sleek uh, look, which I appreciate. Um, but as a byproduct of that, the tank is pretty small and you're not going to get um, many miles out of the tank. I think I'm averaging about a little over 100 miles before, um, you know, the fuel light is saying you need to, uh, or the fuel range indicator is saying you need to get more gas. Now, I think this indicator from what I read is pretty conservative. So you can go 15, 20 miles beyond empty. That's what I've read, but I haven't pushed it to find out. Um, speaking of the fueling, I don't like this um, Monza style uh, fuel cap. It's really obnoxious. Um, I'm going to be switching that out for a standard one at some point. And the last little gripe I have is um, the kickstand is just pretty low. So 
there's actually a pad normally right here that I have taken out to try to give myself a little more clearance. But what this means functionally is that if you like to ride aggressively at all, um, you're gonna be scraping uh, this. As you can see, I've scraped it a little bit already and I'm trying to avoid doing that. Um, so I need to figure out if there's an aftermarket kickstand or something that'll you know come up more flush. Um, so yeah, those are my uh, dislikes of the bike. Now, on to the likes. Um, and there's much more that I like than I don't like about this bike. Uh, number one thing I like about this bike is the looks. Looks are just fantastic. It's a timeless design. Um, it's the type of bike that you can buy and then 30 years later, it's gonna look uh, just as good. So yeah, that's my number one like. So yeah, aside from the looks, um, my next major like is the engine. This bike's engine is sublime, sounds awesome, uh, very torquey, um, especially now that I've had a tune done, it's just great linear power delivery. Um, it has more than enough power for overtaking and, uh, you know, I, I just love it. That was the main attraction of this bike over the uh, Z900 RS and the MT-09 SP was that I just loved the twin um, engine. So, yeah, no complaints about the engine. Um, going with that is the sound of the exhaust, even in stock form. They've done a really good job at tuning this exhaust to just sound fantastic. Um, but I have since upgraded the exhaust and it sounds even better. So yeah, exhaust note, really, really nice. Um, another thing I really like about this bike is the riding position. I'm pretty tall. I'm six foot five. Um, and this bike's kind of standard riding position is uh, really comfortable for commuting and things like that. Um, only dislike would be that. Um, it doesn't have a lot of wind protection, but you know, that comes with territory of buying uh, this type of bike. I prefer to have no wind protection for looks, but I do commute on it. So I got the little uh, windscreen to give me some protection and it does enough. Um, but yeah, uh, riding position is very comfortable. Um, I really like the mirrors. The stock mirrors are pretty good um, and I don't anticipate myself switching them out. Um, so that's another uh, highlight of the bike. Um, let's see. I think the last, oh, the, the brakes. Brakes are really, really good. Um, I don't see myself, you know, ever needing to upgrade them. Uh, I haven't taken this to a track yet, so I can't really attest to, you know, if there's brake fade or anything like that under heavy loads. But in my use, I have noticed no problems with the brakes. They have tons of stopping power, uh, work really well. Um, let's see. Yeah, those are kind of the main um, positives of the bike. I would say, oh, one more kind of general comment is that this has a relatively um, short wheelbase, so it handles pretty well. Uh, it's really easy to drive in the city. It's easy to flick around in traffic. So for a commuter bike, I, I don't think you can do much better than this, um, you know, unless you're going like full GS or something like that and you're into that style, which I'm not. Um, final general comment is that the fit and finish on this bike is really, really good. Um, something I noticed immediately when I picked it up. Nothing is loose. Um, you know, all the wires and cables and everything are just cleanly routed. There's no kinks. Everything's zip tied or otherwise, you know, contained. Um, yeah, everything just kind of has its place. I, I mean, I, I, I was really impressed. Uh, British vehicles can get a bad rap for uh, not the greatest fit and finish, but that has not been my experience with this um, at all. Even when I was, you know, changing out the air filter and stuff, taking these panels off and, you know, under the seat, all the wiring is just someone, whoever built my bike, I don't know if this is the case across all Triumphs, but whoever built my bike um, seemed to have taken uh, a lot of time to make sure everything was done correctly. And I see little inside the engine, there's little stickers and like initials where they, they check things. So. Um, yeah, I really appreciate the fit and finish on this. I hope it lasts a long time. Okay, so with that having been said, um, let's go through the mods I've done to the bike. We'll start in the front. So first mod I did, um, well, we won't do it in order, but so we have the um, Dart windscreen. Uh, Dart makes the windscreens for Triumph, the OEM ones. Um, so, you know, good brand to, uh, to get because it, it fits just perfectly with the bike and it does give me a little wind protection. It protects the instrument cluster from getting smashed by, uh, by things. I would have preferred if Dart had actually made a little bit bigger windscreen, but this is the biggest one they had available at the time. I don't know if they have bigger ones now, um, but it works okay to uh, duck behind. Um, the next mod I did was 
the um, radiator guard. This is an EvoTech radiator guard. Last thing you want is a stone coming up on your brand new bike and just piercing your radiator. So that I actually ordered that and had it before I even picked up the bike. So highly recommend that. Um, next upgrade is the Olin's um, steering damper right here. Uh, I got most of these mods from, I think it's AJ or ANJ Cycles. Um, and this one's nice because it comes with the whole kit. So it comes with this adapter to bolt in and this adapter for the fork. So you can just buy the kit and you don't have to worry about sourcing individual parts. So I really like the, that. I think every bike should have a steering damper. Um, next major upgrade I did was the uh, suspension. As I had mentioned before, the um, front and rear suspension left a lot to be desired in the stock bike. So in the front, I have K-Tech uh, cartridges, and in the rear, I have um, K-Tech rear shocks. And I've been super happy with these. Uh, they're fully adjustable. K-Tech makes great stuff. I mean, it's basically comparable to Olin's. Um, and I just, I mean, it's a British brand, so I was like, oh, let's put a British suspension in a British bike. It just seemed right. Um, Next upgrades I did, I installed the SW Motec crash bars. I like them because they give a lot of protection, but I don't think they're too intrusive um, and they kind of fit with the theme of the bike pretty well. Um, next upgrade I did was the Motone uh, Nautilus exhaust. Love this exhaust. Um, it just, I think it just looks really, really good, especially with the, uh, with the welds. I mean, look at that, just awesome. And it's been developing nice, nice color. I was looking for a titanium exhaust, couldn't find one. Um, so I had to go with a stainless steel exhaust, but it looks really good. Um, let's see, what else have I done? I installed a NOCO, um, basically equivalent to a battery tender. So you can see it peeps out over here to make this thing easy to charge if I need to. Um, and I can tuck it behind that panel if I don't want the, the look. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all the upgrades I've done down here. Um, up on the top, we have a Peak Designs phone, hold, phone holder. I really like their system. It's, um, it's very minimalist. Um, the phone case is not bulky, and it has a nice like anti-vibration thing built in. I've had no problems with this. Highly recommend it. So yeah, Peak Design. Um, this tether is for my, uh, normally it just comes out here. It's for my airbag vest, my Helite airbag backpack, actually. Um, so I always wear that when I'm riding. Um, other upgrades I've done, I installed the Canon high flow air filter, and then I have an SLR um, semi-custom uh, engine tune on here, which really um, resolved the running lean, like the popping, the backfiring, the hot um, engine, the snatchy throttle all that got resolved by the tune. So yeah, overall, I'd say this is a awesome bike to just buy and keep and like tinker with and build it up over time. It's great design um, and there's a lot of aftermarket support for it. Uh, sounds great, get compliments on it whenever I drive it and park it in public. So yeah, um, if this is kind of your style of bike and you're looking for something to just commute on or daily drive, this is great. I wouldn't say this is particularly good for touring or anything like that, obviously no wind protection, but uh, yeah, it's been a it's been a great bike. I've had no issues. I think if there's anything else I want to say. Um, oh, additional mods I'm planning to do. So these are all the functional mods I've planned to do with the bike. But I do plan to do some more cosmetic mods in the future. Like I said, I plan to replace the gas cap um, and probably put on some little um, maybe brass pieces or you know nothing crazy, just a few pieces to accent it. Um, and then I'm planning to have it repainted. So I'm planning to have the tank and this portion and this airbox cover area uh, repainted. Um, I went to Vanderbilt, so I plan to have the color scheme implemented here. So I'm going to have the tank and this and this. The primary color will be like cream white color. And then I'm going to have the gold uh, star and then a black and gold like racing stripes. So they're going to kind of go through here and then down and, and over there. So I think that'll look pretty cool. Um, and yeah, that's, that's really the only, uh, oh, and I'll probably do like some type of tail tidy uh, situation because I still have the stock, um, the stock tail and maybe some low profile blinkers. I'm not sure. I, I do kind of like these. They are very visible. Um, and I don't mind the look. So 
I might just keep those stock. But yeah, let's uh, let's turn it on and give you a little taste of what it sounds like, and then we'll call it a day. I'll probably put it in neutral. That's probably a good idea. That's it for the 2023 Triumph Speed Twin 1200. Love the bike. Um, I think if you do a couple mods to it, I would say the necessary mods to really get the most out of the bike will, will be, you need to upgrade the suspension and you need to uh, put a tune on there. But if you do those two things, the bike's gonna ride really, really good. And then all the other mods just for protection and things like that um, are more just kind of discretionary. So yeah, any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks for watching.